Did you know that the honeybee colonies around the country are dying at an alarming rate? About one-third of them fail every year. The scientists are not exactly sure why. Parasites, disease, genetics, and pesticides may all be factors. So local communities like ours are working to keep the bees buzzing. Let's find out more. We're at Brookside Nature Center, and Brookside Nature Center has been home to the Montgomery County Beekeepers Association for many years. They meet here once a month on a regular basis, and they are uh, the caretakers for the hives we have here and for our observation hive. We have focused on bees because they're an important part of the ecosystem, and many people don't think about the relationship of bees to the food they eat, to the health of the ecosystem that they live in. And so it is a big part of our program to help people be better stewards of the world. And in this um, observation hive, what you'll see is down in this corner where there is a lot of activity with the bees, there is a hole that goes down here and then out through the building so that these bees are actually going outside to collect the pollen and the honey. And you'll see a lot of things going on. Um, the honey bees have a very organized life the first few weeks of a bee's life, they become what we call hive bees. Their job is to maintain the hive, clean the cells as new uh, bees are being born, make sure that things are cleaned up. Um, they may be building wax. Up here you can see that there are some wax that's been capped. That's all honey in here. And you know, honey comes in a lot of different colors, and so you'll have areas of honey that are dark in color, which is probably a different nectar source from the honey that's up here, which is a lighter nectar source. So watching the bees is fascinating. So all this motion you see in here can be just communicating with the other bees where to go and get nectar and um, pollen. See this little bee? It turns around in circles and vibrates. That's a little bee dance telling something about direction of pollen and nectar. Maryland beekeeper Lou Sanford shows us how to extract the honey and wax. I'm going to start my smoker here as we prepare to go into the uh, apiary. These are just good old local Maryland white pine needles. We'll start at the base and the front door of the hive. We're going to smoke underneath because it's an open grid and what that will do is kind of confuse their ability to signal one another. We're going to gently open up the hive going to see how well these girls have been producing honey. Everybody in the hive, except for a small number of uh, male drones, are, are female. And, uh, and so I tend to call them the girls. Oh, there we have the queen bee right there. You see, there's the queen bee again. See how much longer her body is compared to everybody yep. else in here? She's a busy girl. You can see these girls are, are definitely very active. Look at all that extra excess wax that they're producing here. I'll have to come back and, uh, and remove some of that for, for my candle making. You see where all this honey is located? All right. And these guys are building uh, extra honey right into the, into the top of their their main brood chamber. So this is a hot knife that we'll use to, uh, to trim off the caps of, of the uh, honey chamber so that we can extract honey. I'm just gonna lift that right off, those cappings right off and out of the way. So the wax that I'm taking out can be washed and, and used for candle making or other types of uh, products like soap. This is what we'd really like to see when we have a full load of honey in here where the bees have capped almost all the way across and, um, and that's all honey behind there. And, and even when we turn it over, it's more than two thirds uh, full of uh, honey. We'll load this into the uh, chamber of the extractor. And this is a centrifuge. I'm gonna go ahead and spin the centrifuge out so you can see what the process is like. So you can see the walls of the chamber are now covered with honey. So that's probably a cup or maybe two cups of honey spread around the outside of the extractor right now and it's slowly going to drip its way down to the bottom. We got the first drips of honey about to come out of the, the chamber down here. 
So you can see that there's little crumbs of wax and, and, uh, and other minor impurities out there, but what's flowing out of there, 99% is probably pure honey in that cool, pale yellow form is wildflower honey. In the state of Maryland, we have a, a strong interest in uh, beekeeping and bees in general because they're so important to our food stocks. And places like Brookside actually create a setting where the general public, everybody seems to like honey, but you don't know uh, how valuable honeybees and bees are. And Brookside Gardens does a great job of providing an educational uh, setting where the public can come and watch honeybees in action at some of their uh, demonstration hives, as well as um, offering in good information to the public about why it's important to take care of honeybees and not to kill them if you see a swarm near your property. Right now we're going to take a walk up the hill to our meadow where we have a number of beehives and our native bee hotel. It's just a few hundred feet up the hill here, so please join. Brady Hartley and me. Now we're going to talk about native bees and this is what we call our bee hotel, just creating some habitat for some of the natives and specifically uh, mason bees are the bees that use this and we also call it our six leg sanctuary. All right so right now the bees have already finished nesting for the spring so you can tell because they have mud on the outside. That's one reason they're called mason because they build with mud. So we, will, we won't see these bees until next spring in early March. So this is a home that um, a lot of, about 30% of our native bees nest in something like a tube. So this is a tube that we put out and it's just a cardboard tube. And this is, gives a place for the bee to build her nest. So the one mason bee flies in, the female, she gets pollen and nectar. She makes a little ball and she lays an egg in it and then she builds a mud wall. And the bees on this end are actually gonna be males and the bees farther in are gonna be females. So if this gets pecked out by a woodpecker or something, the males are a little more expendable in the bee world, but the females are protected. All right, so this shows in pictures what's happening inside the tubes that I just showed you. So you can see the life cycle a little more clearly. You've got the pollen, this is beginning stage pollen and nectar with the egg being laid in it in a mud wall. And then the egg turns into the larva, it eats that food and it keeps developing. It goes into a pupal stage. It's in a cocoon and then the following spring it will emerge and try to find a new bee tube and do the whole cycle again. So to help the pollinators, these are some of the things that we recommend. One of the things that's affecting the pollinators is not as much habitat, so you can grow native plants, avoid using pesticides because that can kill the bees or really stress them out so they get more diseases, and try to spread the word that bees need our help. To learn more about bees and beekeeping at Brookside Nature Center, check out the free Honey Harvest Festival on September 19th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Go to montgomeryparks.org for details. The Montgomery County Beekeepers Association can be found at montgomerycountybeekeepers.com.